Okay, so for the for the next section, section 2, Results Abandonment Assimilation. So in this part naman, uh, let's find out kung bakit muntik at muntik ka nang uh, sumuko si Rizal na ipaglaban ng kalayaan ng Pilipinas. At bakit nga ba sumagi sa kanyang isipan ang uh, pagpapalit ng... Uh, o yun niya, abandonment, as, uh, uh, abandonment of assimilation. Bakit pumasok sa isip niya na iwan yung ganitong uh, nasimulan niyang uh, gawain para sa bansang Pilipinas? So basically, here in this section, I'm going to present to you the circumstances that prompted Rizal to consider other means of campaigning for reforms for the Philippines. So after a series of setbacks both in the Philippines and Spain, Rizal was set to move forward to demand change from the colonizers. Okay. Uh, kasi, yun nga, the lack of significant progress in the campaigns for reform led by the Estrados and other propagandists prompted many Filipinos to believe that such campaigns were futile. Okay, so parang na-realize na, na, na ni Rizal na parang yung kanilang mga efforts and sacrifices ay walang kwenta, walang progress, o walang pagbabago. So these rendered them hopeless and uninterested in supporting the campaigns. So nawala na sila ng motivation, nawala na sila ng interest para sa pagbabago or para sa kalayaan ng Pilipinas. So Filipinos in Spain were also losing motivation. Others opted to passively participate in Filipino initiatives while others decided to find their own ways to take part in more active campaigns against Spain. This had been the scenario among the Filipino nationalists in Spain. Personal rival, uh, rivalries among Filipinos also arose and became a hindrance to the formation of concrete plans and actions. Yeah. So, yun nga. Graciano Lopez Haina and Jose Rizal's withdrawal from La Solidaridad that was caused by disagreement and differences in ideals and aspirations. This left Marcelo H. Del Pilar to manage the newspaper single-handedly and in addition, the desire of other Filipino nationalists to establish a new organization to counter the Spanish rule resulted in setbacks and efforts initiated by La Solidaridad. So, ito yung time na dahil magkakaiba sila ng ng principles, magkakaiba sila ng idea para sa pag, pagpapalago ng uh, La Solidaridad, nagkaroon sila ng hindi pagkakaintindihan o pagdatalo. At ito nga ay nag-ugat sa kanilang paghihiwalay at naiwan si Plaridel sa La Solidaridad. Is, uh, if you can still remember my character or my role sa Rizal is my president, di ba? I portray the character of Marcelo H. Del Pilar. So, kami during that time, nung inaaral namin yung script at nung binigay sa amin yung role namin. So, ang assign sa amin, kailangan namin mag-conduct ng thorough research para pag-aralan yung buhay ng role na yon na binigay sa amin. So, ito nga si Plaridel lang na-assign sa akin. And uh, upon my, my, upon my research during that time, na-discover ko na di ba maalala nyo yung line ni Plaridel sa unang eksena na muy delisyoso talaga ang pandesal na ito. Walang-wala sa upos ng sagarili yung pinatulan ko nung ako nagugutom pa sa Espanya. Tapos ang sabi ni Gabriela, patay gutom daw ako. So, in fact, nasabi ni Gabriela ang patay gutom ako kasi sa totoong buhay, si Plaridel sa sa Barcelona, sa Madrid, ay nung, kanya, nung naiwan siyang mag-isa sa La Solidaridad, uh, dumating siya sa punto ng buhay niya na wala na siyang makain. Dahil yung pera na dapat ipangkakain niya, inaalat niya para sa pang-publish ng La Solidaridad. So, dahil sa gutom, wala siyang choice kundi kainin ng upos na sigarilyo yung kanyang uh, hinihit-hit during that time dahil sa sobrang lamig sa Spanya. So, umabot siya sa ganung punto ng buhay niya na pati yung upos ng sigarilyo ay kinakain niya pantawid gutom. So, yun nga, na-share ko lang naman si Plaridel ay naiwang mag-isa sa La Solidaridad. Samantalang si Rizal naman at saka si Graciano Lopez Haina at yung iba pang mga contributor ng publication ay nagkanya-kanya. So, nakakalungkot na hanggang sa ibang bansa ang ating mga propagandista ay uh, nakaisip ng ganung gawain na parang naghiwalay or nagbuklod sa isa't isa. Okay. 
So, yan. Many believe that it would be better to be part of new organization with members, United, Rizal, Del Pilar, and Haina, towards one goal instead of being an organization where personal rivalries hinder concrete actions toward great nationalism. Sabi ko nga, ay, napaka-unprofessional naman ng mga to kasi tampuhan lang ay nagiwahiwalay pa. Pero hindi sila masisisi dahil siguro sadyang sila ay kapwa madamdamin sa isa't isa kaya dumating sila doon sa ganung point na naghiwahiwalay so yun madaming mga Pilipino or maraming mga propagandista ang nagkanya-kanya during that time yan so one of the predominant reforms labid by Filipinos were representation in the Spanish Cortes so in this time nabigyan ng chance ang mga Pilipino na umupo sa kongreso at matindang hearing so this move would have given Filipinos a voice in the Spanish government though a limited capacity. So, masayang-masaya ang ating mga propagandista that time dahil yun niya, parang nabigyan ng chance na makapag-voice out ang mga Filipino kasi yun niya, hindi sila ng pagkakataon na makaupo sa hearing sa Spanish Cortes. So, such representation was previously granted to the Filipinos but was taken back. The lack of concrete commitment of the part of the Spanish government only made a representation of Filipinos barely enough time to material so nagbago din ah uh, inalis din siya yung ganung opportunity para sa mga Pilipino na ikinalungkot naman ng ating mga propagandista so around that time yan Rizal was all uh, Rizal was also preoccupied with the troubles of Hacienderos in Calamba whose situation he already brought before the country courts of Spain so for Rizal, the lack of Philippine representation in the Spanish Cortes and the denial of justice to the appeal of Filipinos over agrarian problems had proven that improbability of campaign for Filipino rights. So nung time na to, uh, gulong-gulo din ang isipan ni Rizal dahil yung, yung kanyang pamilya sa, na naiwan sa Pilipinas ay kasulukuyang nagkakaroon ng matinding problema sa kanilang buhay dahil ito yung pagkakataon o ito yung time na ang problema ng kalambahas Hacienda ay umakyat na sa hukuman. So, kumbaga, sobrang dami ng iniisip ni Rizaldo during that time. Yan. So, meron pa siyang letter kay Blooming Treat noong 1887. Uh, sabi niya, The peaceful struggle must remain in a dream. For Spain will never learn from her earlier colonists in South America. But in the present circumstances, we want no separation from Spain. All we demand is more care, better instruction, better officials, one or two representatives, and more security for ourselves and our property. Spain can still win the Philippines for herself forever. If only Spain were more responsible, the situation became more complicated for Rizal after his mother and sister were arrested in Manila. After several ways of imprisonment, they were asked to go back to the car to the courts in the province on foot before they were final finally released. So in a letter sent in 1891, Rizal uh, wrote, If our countrymen hope in us here in Europe, they are certainly mistaken. The field of battle is the Philippines. There is there is where we should be. So, sabi niya kay Blumentritt, uh, uh, i-highlight natin yun, the field of battle is the Philippines. Uh, is where, where, where we should be. Yun. Yun ang sabi ni Rizal kay Blumentritt. Yan. So, yeah, Rizal set the course for uh, his return to Manila after the publication of his second novel, El Filibusterismo. So, yeah, all copies of the novel were shipped to the Philippines and upon his arrival, he established a new organization, the La Liga Filipina. It's a secret society that embodied the ideas of Rizal presented in El Fili. So, also this included the calls for the provision of mutual protection and defense against all injustices and promotion of instruction and education among all Filipinos. Sabi nga ni Rizal dun sa letter niya kay Blumentritt, the battlefield is in the Philippines and it should be or it should where or is where we should be. So, kaya naman nagkang up si Rizal sa isang idea na umuwi na lang ng Pilipinas after mapublish ang kanyang 
book or second novel na El Filibusterismo. So, that time, itinatag niya ang La Liga Filipina na naglalayong buhayin ang katauhan ni Simon Ibarra. So, that's the discussion for section 2.